Hey, in this video we're going to talk about the memory data cache options that you have using an application in ASP.NET. So we're going to create an example application that will show how to use the data cache features in ASP.NET. But before we do that, let's talk about some of the concepts behind caching. So caching is developed and designed to make an application work faster. So caching allows your application to grow with larger number of users and not degrade in its performance. So usually there is a data source, like a database that's in your application, and then there's a client. And when the data can't keep up with the clients, like if you have millions of people all trying to access the same database, you might need to have an intermediate place called the data cache. So the main point of a cache is that there is a subset of the main data source that is copied, and the most recently used copy is accessible to the application in a very close manner in a very quick accessible place. So caching is used in many different contexts. It's used like everywhere in computers. So you're likely familiar with a browser that has a cache. So your web browser has a copy of recently viewed pages. And so if you go back to look at a page, you might not get the original page again, but you might be viewing a copy of it that was saved in your computer's memory. And so that saves a full round trip to a web server. Also, the program called Redis is a commonly used database caching system. So that if your database server is not keeping up with things, you can cache recently viewed queries, and so your application can use a memory in-memory cache instead of going back to the database server every time for frequently used queries. Also, in the context of hardware, so in a computer system, a hard drive is very slow in comparison to memory and CPU registers. And so a recently used piece of memory is sometimes saved in a CPU cache or a recently used file is saved in a memory cache so that way you don't have to go get the original copy every time that you access it. So close by, quick, and uh, recent access are some of the things that you would find in a cache system. So some data doesn't work well with a cache. So if you're looking at recently stored versions of a web page, for example, let's say you went to the weather report and you wanted to see what today's weather was and your browser showed yesterday's weather, you might be looking at a cached copy. And so you would do a refresh on your browser to see the most currently viewed weather report. So the same thing happens in other things. So you're looking at data from a database and you want to see the most up to the instant version of it. That would not be a good candidate then to use in a caching system. Here's an example of what stale data would look like. Let's say you're viewing plane tickets and you're looking at recent uh, flight prices. Now sometimes a website will either automatically update and refresh your page or it might force you to log off or to do a quick search again to get the most ver recent version of the, of the prices. And so if you've got data that has, it's got to be instantaneously visible, it has to be accurate, you can't see yesterday's copy or even a second ago's copy, then caching is a bad solution for you. But most of the time, caching can work very, very well to speed up your application. So when you want to find a good place to implement caching, you would look at maybe a data flow of your application or process or whatever it is. So if you were to look at a process, let's, let's say this is an assembly line, and you're creating little balls or little widgets, these green things, and you notice that station C in your assembly line doesn't work very fast, whether it's you know, detailed oriented or you don't have enough resources, enough employees, or something's not working well. And so there's a stack that builds up behind it. So this would be a good time to think about caching what I, whatever happens at, at item C. So if you, were the, if you were an assembly line manager, you would say, station C has to run 24-7. We're going to make sure that we save up the parts and put them in a bin. That's your cache. And so when we get to um, start the first shift again and item D comes back into play and the entire factory's working, 
that there is a cash, there is a supply that we can draw down on. And so C works at its steady, slow pace all the time, 24 hours a day. And D comes along and, and sometimes scoops up large quantities of consumer product and then, and then it doesn't have to sit and wait. So caching is for when you find bottlenecks in a system. So in the example that we see on the screen here, we have a slow data source, the, the database on the right here. And the application is going to be accessing it all the time to say, hey, gimme, gimme, gimme. I want to see who the users are. I want to see what transactions they're doing. And the application runs so fast that it's always sitting and waiting for the database to catch up. So your database server is running at 100% CPU. The memory is maxed out. It's behind and the entire system slows down. So the solution is you get a cache system. You get something like Redis. And so then when you have a quick application that is chewing through the data, it might take a, uh, a data store request, like give me a list of users. And then it'll save that into the cached database system, so Redis. And it will say, hey, I'm going to keep you around here. And I might, uh, might last here for 30 seconds, might be here for a day, don't know. You can set the uh, settings on your cache to whatever is appropriate for your application. And so the next time it says, I want to go get the users, it will go, first of all, check to the cache and to say, hey, do we have any users around that, that, uh, that I could look at? And if it does, then it never has to bother the data storage. And so the, the Redis is probably running 10 times faster than the original database server. And, you know, it can really improve a system without having to go out and buy multiple database servers. So in the application that we're going to develop, it's going to be this exact kind of a model. We're not going to install Redis or anything like that, but we are going to have some memory, in-memory cache that keeps track of records that we got from a database. And uh, it'll keep those records current for, let's say, 60 seconds. And after 60 seconds expires, then the application will no longer use the cache. It'll go back to the original source and say, hey, give me whatever, whatever you got there for the users. So up next is let's get coding. Let's make this application happen and let's see how it works in actual C-sharp code.